Welcome to the Unrest Podcast. I'm Madeline Green. And I'm Caitlin Stansel. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and hit subscribe so you get the latest real life haunt from the Unrest Podcast as soon as it hits all the apps that they go on. <laughs> you want to know what I am ready to hit? <laughs> That's not how I wanted to say that. <laughs> Interesting. This could go a lot of different ways. <laughs> I'm ready for October to hit. <laughs> I I concur. <laughs> a good old brisk fall night. I mean, I can just feel it in my bone. Mm. Now I love I love summer and I like to sweat, but I'm like I'm done sweating. Summer has its place in its time, and that time is about over. It's about over. <laughs> Today I was at Publix getting some overpriced groceries and they had the candy corn on the corner and I was like can it's I get this time can I get the candy corn or should I wait I mean I waited but best believe I'll be getting the candy corn soon well by the time you buy it now it's going to be the stale candy corn that's been on the shelf for two months <laughs> that's when I'll give it to my mom <laughs> loves a good stale candy corn <laughs> oh my gosh love it well tell us about our real life haunt for this week this week we have Lenora and she's going to share with us a few of her spooky tales. So take a listen. For me, it started in high school. I was in grade 11 and we moved into an old Victorian house, me and my mom. And it was built in the early 1800s. And it was owned by the mayor at the time. So they, what they did is they made it into five separate flats, um, like apartments. And so we were on the main floor in my room. My mom thinks was a server's room, the way that it was set up and everything. It was gorgeous, like high ceilings. It was, it was gorgeous. But the vibe of it was uncomfortable, to say the least. I remember my mom went away for a week and I remember going on Facebook saying all alone by myself in my haunted house. And so basically what would happen is for me, my, my bed is in like the middle of my room. It wasn't up against the wall or anything like that. And I remember my desk was on the left of it. My, my bed, or my desk was on the right of it, my TV was on the left of it, and so I would be laying down watching TV, and, you know, I would just feel like somebody standing behind me, staring at me, and it was just that uncomfortable feeling, like, I'm not, like, I couldn't turn around for the life of me, like, I wanted to, but it was almost like I was being held down, like, I just could not turn around. So I, I just got used to that. I just didn't really look into any of it, really. And then I remember um, my mom wanted me to go to the basement one time, and I went down the stairs, and it got, like, a dirt floor. It wasn't, like, a finished basement because it was so old. And I remember getting down to the bottom step, and I'm like, there is no way. Like, I couldn't even get off the step. And I ran right back up. I'm like, I'm not going in there. I didn't see anything, but it's just that general, like, heaviness of the energy there. Um, for me, I've always been able to pick up on energy, including people's energy as well. So, like, if somebody's, you know, sad, I, 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 I know that they're sad, even if they say they're not or if something's on their mind. So, yeah, so the energy is just too much. And... Our kitchen had like one of those folding doors for their for the pantry, and my mom would always take doors off of closets and put up lace. And so she took the door off, and we had a cat, and our cat would always go crazy in the kitchen, like absolutely wild. And I never really thought anything of it, but I'll tell you more about that later on. In my bedroom, I had like a a sleigh bed. So think of like a, 
a Santa sleigh, you know how it's got like that rim at the bottom, like the foot of the bed. Um, so I, even now to this day, when I sleep, I've always, my whole life, I've always cuddled um, my blankets like close up to my chest. I've always been that way, even in the summer, even in the heat. I always have my blankets like just cuddled right up tight in my chest. Well, I woke up one morning and my blanket and my sheet, I, I woke up because I was cold, I was chilly, and I noticed my blanket wasn't on me and I'm, I'm looking for it and I couldn't feel it anywhere because I didn't open my eyes and just looking like feeling it around. And I couldn't find it and I opened my eyes and my blanket and my sheet was tucked so tightly at the foot of my bed that I had to stand on my bed and pull it up to use that much force to take it out. So that, that, that creeped me out for a really long time because I'm just like, I'm a very light sleeper. So like normally, you know, just like a thought I would wake up to. And so the fact that I slept through this, you know, it just blew my mind. Kind of just, tried to ignore ignore that we only lived there I think six months or so and then we moved I did know when we moved in like the owners told us the history of when it was built and that there was a mayor living there but I'd never fully looked further into it the interesting thing though very interesting is that a few years later I was working at a hotel and we got a new employee and he was a ghost hunter. And so we were all in the employee room, like us and a few employees. And he's like, all right, like, you know, like, let's hear all your ghost stories. So I'm telling the story of this house. And then my coworker that is in the same department with me that I work with every day, he starts telling stories about his house. And the, the general location of the area and we pinpointed that when I, when me and my mom moved out of that flat, him and his partner moved in, in the exact same flat. And like, it just, it was crazy. This is years later. And I'm just like, what are the odds? Like, what are the actual odds? And this, and hearing his stories confirmed my story. So when I was telling of you about the pantry in the kitchen, when he moved in, well, the you know, they put the folding doors back up in the pantry. And his cat would always go wild in the kitchen also. And my cat was also wild in the kitchen. Nowhere else really, like sometimes around the basement, but normally it was just like the kitchen basement area. The rest of the house, like they were chill. And so one day he heard the door in the pantry opening and closing and so he just assumed that it was his cat messing around with the door because it's one of those foldable doors and so he comes in to move the cat and the cat's not there and so I'm like okay <laughs> and then his partner was cleaning one day and I don't know how I didn't even notice this but I think because I just like ignored the basement door for so long but he said his partner was scrubbing the basement door and he found like tiny little swastikas carved on the inside of the door so happy i didn't see that when i was living there so i also saw an orb there as well which was pretty cool i've never seen one since but it was it was so strange because like you see them in photographs and you're just like oh it's you know, it's just like dust or whatever like that, but it was moving and I, I can't even describe it. It was just like this tiny little ball of light and it was, I, I can't even, maybe the size of a marble. It was very small and it was in our living room and it just kind of like went away. And then when I told my mom about it, you know, like, I saw this orb, she's like, oh, she's just like, well, I wasn't sure if it was because I was sick or not, but I saw a child, like, I saw a little girl in her room, and 
I, I never question that. She was sick, but I do believe when people are sick, I know they say, like, people hallucinate and stuff, but I don't know. You know what you see when you see it, right? I, I believe her, especially with everything that I experienced in that house. So, yeah, so the fact that it was confirmed years later by my coworker just blew my mind. Also working at the hotel, I had a few experiences at the hotel as well. And same thing, I didn't look up the history, but we we are in, uh, I'm in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And so we had, we had an explosion in the early 1900s in the harbor and it killed thousands, injured thousands of people. And this is like the, a, a, like a really old port city. And so the hotel that I was working in was downtown and it would have been in the area that it would have been impacted by that explosion. So the, the biggest thing that I remember in the hotel was I was in a, I was cleaning a boardroom. I was doing housekeeping at the time and I was cleaning a boardroom and the lights are the dimming lights. So you don't flick them on, you, you turn them up and down. And so for all the boardrooms, they have serveries attached to them so the servers can get their, you know, drinks and food and ready and come out through the boardroom and serve. So I'm vacuuming away, and the lights went off. They didn't dim down. They went off, and then they went on, and then they went off, and then they went on, and then they went off, and then they went on. And I'm just standing here with this vacuum in my hand looking around and I yell out I'm like who's back there because I thought okay somebody's in the servery because they can control lights in the back room in the servery so I go out back in the servery nobody's in the servery I check the hall nobody's down the hall I check the offices nobody's in the offices nothing outside sources could have touched those lights and so that that was a big thing that I will never forget. Like I said, because they're they're the dimming lights, right? You, you know, you have to switch them off and on. Following the hotel, the I don't I don't even know what to call it, but this the figure that I felt in the house. I don't know if it followed me. I don't know if it's the same thing or not, but. Um, a few years later, we moved to just another house. I don't, I don't think it had any history to it or anything like that. But I had, I had this dream, and I, my whole life, I've had very vivid dreams. And so, like, there's dreams that I remember from childhood. It's just like they're so vivid, they're so real. But anyway, so we're in this, we're in this house. This is a few years later, and. I, I'm asleep, and so I'm I'm dreaming, but I'm in my house, and I'm on the balcony outside, and we live on a main road, and I look across the street. There's no traffic, and there's a man walking up the street. He's, like, I can't see his full details, but he's, he's large. He's tall. He's a big man, and the, the energy that I felt from him was that kind of big, heavy energy that I felt in that house. I felt it a few times in the hotel as well, which is why I thought maybe this thing is following me around because now I'm at a new house and I'm still feeling this energy. So anyway, so I'm, I'm watching him walk up the street and I, I feel like, you know, like this doesn't feel right. Next thing I know, I'm back in my room. I'm sleeping. My eyes are closed. But it's like I could see through my eyelids because I'm, I'm in my bed and he's standing at the foot of my bed, staring at me, almost thinking like, I don't know if it was just trying to think if I was awake, trying to figure out if I was awake or not. But I'm just like paralyzed, could not move. And I could feel him poke my leg. I felt the poke. The poke is what woke me up because I could physically feel it. And then I woke up and he was gone and that was that. So I, I don't know about this, this man um, in another place once again. And the place that I had moved after that, I really didn't experience a whole lot. Uh, and so I thought like, okay, like it's gone. I don't have to worry about it anymore.
the place that we were in, like I said, didn't not much happen. Sometimes I could hear like scratching under our bed in the middle of the night, and I thought I it was maybe a cat or something because we had two cats at the time, and there would be no cats under the bed. Um, there's times where I felt like the cats were jumping on the bed, coming up to sleep, and there's there's no cats there. So, so some of some cats like that. And then we moved again. So in the place that I'm at right now, this is where I've been the longest now. I've been here seven years. Not a whole lot has happened here either. Um, we, Me and my son both can feel different energies here, but they don't feel like big or heavy or threatening or anything like that. I will say, though, that we have two full baths, and I was taking a shower one day and my partner at the time was taking a shower in the other bathroom which is in our bedroom and so I get out of the shower and the first thing I do is I open the door to help clear out the fog I open the door and I start wiping off the mirror and I could see what I thought was my partner walking into the kitchen because he was the same height like quite tall so I start talking. I, I can't even remember what I was saying, but I start talking to him and he's not responding to me. And of course, I'm like, oh, this man, he's deaf, he needs hearing aids. So I go up to the kitchen and he's not there. And I'm like, oh, well, I didn't see him walk back the other way. So he's not in the living room. He's not in the office. So I'm like, okay, well, that's strange. So I walk back into her bedroom and he's still in in our bathroom, in the bedroom. And I'm like, okay, maybe I just didn't see him walk past. So I told him, I said, why, you know, did you hear what I said? Like, he didn't respond to me. And he's like, no, I'm like, when you were out in the kitchen, he's like, no. And he's like, I just got out of the shower. I wasn't in the kitchen. But shortly after that, and by shortly, I want to say within a week, my friend and her son came over for a visit uh, for a play date with my son. And they were young. How old were they? Uh, I want to say they were around four, three or four. Yeah, probably around four or five. And the kids were in the living room, and we have this long hallway going down to the bedroom. And her son wanted to go in my son's room, but he looked at his mom and said, I want to go in Gavin's room, but I don't want to pass the scary man. At that point, I honestly, I, I completely forgot about what I saw like a week before. I just had it completely out of my mind. But when he said that, I was just like, oh, right, that happened. <laughs> um, I was going down memory lane with my niece there not too long ago, and uh, I completely forgot about my experience out in Jasper, um, Jasper, Alberta. Um, I worked there for a couple months, not too long, so I started getting homesick. I, now, I didn't fully look into the history either, so it was just rumors that were being told to me. But we worked there like little log cabins. Um, it's really cute. And apparently, way back when, it used to be a Chinese concentration camp. And so I was told before going in, like, oh, some of the cabins are haunted. And I'm just like, okay, sure. And one of the one of the cabins was, like, a lot of celebrities used to stay at these cabins. And Marilyn Monroe stayed in, she, I can't remember if she came more than once, but there was one cabin that she stayed in that I remember we went in to clean and there was a couple of us. So there was two people in one bedroom each so there was there's four of us in total and two two of them left to go get supplies and because it's on like a large oh it's it's got like a lot of acreage they use golf carts to get around to get the supplies and so me and my partner were in the bedroom and the other two they had to leave to get more supplies and so we're in the room, those two left, the one that I was working with went to the bathroom, so I was by myself, and a pen hit my leg. So 
like somebody threw a pen at me. So I turn around expecting it to be my other team members coming back. I thought they were just playing a prank, like just throwing something at me just to let me know that they were back. But they weren't back. Nobody was there. And my um, other coworker was still in the bathroom. So I thought that was interesting. So that was that was the cabin that Marilyn Monroe stayed at. And then there was another one that I actually, my coworker witnessed with me. Um, it was a very, very small cabin. Um, it literally was like you walk in, the bed is right there, the dresser's to the right of the wall. There's a tiny little walking space to the bathroom. And that's it. Super small. This was at the point before we were open. We were getting the cabins ready to be open for the season. And so we walk in and we hear a lot of banging and rattling in the bathroom. And so we both look at each other and we look at our paper because if there's supposed to be maintenance being worked on in the cabins, it was supposed to be on our list. So we checked our list and we didn't see that there was supposed to be maintenance. We say, hello, is somebody here? We don't hear anything and we look at each other like we know we heard this, nobody's responding. And we're both of us, we're just kind of speechless because it was so loud. I've never heard anything so loud with nobody being there before. But it, it literally, it sounded like tools on like the toilet or the tub or something working on metal or ceramic. And we go in, we go in the bathroom and nobody's there. We go outside, like there's nobody in the area, even outside because the window was open, but there was nowhere in that area that would have been able to make noise like that. So like I said, my coworker was there with me and it was funny because like we both just looked at each other like we we know we just heard that like the both of us heard that we're not going crazy and sure enough like there's nobody in nobody in the room so that's that's what I can think of right now I've always had like I've always had like just little things happen and normally I I kind of just like brush it off at this point um even back then I I try I try not to look into it too much because I find if I look into it too much I just like psych myself up and get scared but yeah I I did have one I want to say a physical connection to a spirit last year like I've always been a very spiritual person and I've always wanted to be able to connect with spirit. I have practiced with pendulum and dowsing rods, but I've always wanted to be able to connect. I, I guess you would say it would be telepathically the way mediums do. Um, so I, I did have an experience happen like that last year. I haven't had anything happen since, but it was still like pretty, pretty dang cool. I was going on Facebook Marketplace looking for a pair of boots for the winter. I put in, you know, winter boots my size, and the very first ad that popped up was exactly my size, which I thought was funny because it's a half a size, like seven and a half. You don't see seven and a half or half sizes very often. Perfect size, there were Sorrel boots, which are expensive boots, selling for $10. Ten dollars. So I'm looking at the ad. I'm like, what's the glitch? Like, I'm looking at the picture. I'm like, they they look like they're in really good condition. So I was like, all right. So I I messaged them and I went to go meet up with them. And this man, he was a he was a single man and he had a or a single father, I should say. Uh, he had a daughter that was I think she was around seven or eight. And he was running late, so we, me and my son, we were just, like, waiting for him. And I was thinking about leaving, but I was just like, no, stay, stay, stay. Like, something in me just said, just, you know, stick around, wait for him, be patient. So he, he was about 15 minutes late, but I'm like, whatever, like, just let it be. So when I when I saw him, it was almost like a sense of humility, like, I know this person, but I know I've never met this person. I don't know. Like, sometimes you just meet people and you you feel like you've known them your whole life. So that's the kind of energy I had with him. And so I thought it was interesting. 
I didn't really think about it too much. I just wanted to get the boots and go. So we go out in the backyard, and his daughter and her friend go in the in the backyard to play in the swing set, which is at the very back of their yard, which is quite a distance. Like, they wouldn't have been able to hear what me and him were talking about. So anyway, so he goes inside, comes out with the boots, and we just start chatting. I try the boots on. I walk around. And in my mind, I keep hearing, I'm always here. He's a big softy. I keep hearing, like, oh, he looks like a tough guy, but he's, he's uh, a softy, like a big cubby bear. And I'm just, like, trying to ignore it. So I'm like, I, I, why would I be thinking of these things? Like, I don't know this person. And so then we're ta- we're just talking about life in general, and I bring up that I was a single a single mom. He's like, yeah, I'm a I'm a single dad, and in my mind, I was just like, your wife passed away, and she's here, and I didn't say anything. He's like, yeah, my wife passed away. I just I kept everything to myself because I just it like I said, it was my first time happening, and I was just so I didn't want to bring it up and like throw him off or anything like that like I just kept it to myself and I'm just like all right like I'm gonna give this man a hug because I just I really feel like he needs a hug and for me it's just like I feel like hugs are just so powerful they can heal they can do so much healing and so I just felt that urge I'm like I gotta give him a hug so you know like we we hugged and said goodbye start driving away and the whole time I'm driving away, all I hear is, like, I never leave him. I never leave him. Like, I'm always there. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of my daughter. And she kept saying that, you know, like, he looks he looks like a tough guy. He looks like a tough guy, but he's not. He'll give the shirt off his back. I, I, I couldn't ignore it anymore, so I called him, and there was no answer. So I left a voicemail, and I said, listen, I'm sorry. I know this is really random. I'm like, but... I really need to talk to you about your wife. Can you please give me a call back when you can? So he called me back later that night and I told him, yeah, I said, listen, like this has never happened to me before, but I wanted to share with you what I was experiencing around you and your daughter. And I told him, I'm like, this voice came over me just telling me that, you know, that she's always there with you and that she's proud of you and your daughter and that, you know, you'd give your shirt off the box for somebody else and all of these things and he's like I'm like I'm sorry if this is like too much he's like you know what he's like it's not and he's like and I'm really not surprised that you called he said because when you left my daughter ran over and said daddy that woman gave me goosebumps the whole time she was here and I could feel like you know she she made me feel like mommy was here that was really validating because I, I felt like I was going out of my mind. Like, I was just like, why, you know, I know most people have this inner dialogue. So I'm like, why am I telling myself all these things? Like, I know this isn't like, obviously it's my inner voice, but like, I wouldn't be saying these random things about this person I don't know. So it was, it was definitely something. So when he called me back and, and told me that, that just made me feel a lot better. Like I said, nothing nothing else really has happened since, but I, I keep working on, you know, my spirituality and trying to be as open as I can, and I do believe that when our loved ones pass, like, I do feel like they're always with us, and we always have people that are with us, watching us and guiding us. What a personal connection. And so many of the stories that she shared, I mean, the one about the guy and he ended up living in the house. I I feel like when things like that happen, it's not a coincidence, you know, it's just too crazy to be. And I think also with someone like this, it's obvious that she has some kind of connection to just to like the spiritual realm. If Mm -hmm. that means there's no way that this many different things happens to the same people without having some sort of connection, whether And I think by the end, she does mention, you know, like she's interested in that mediumship, probably because she has felt so many connections and now they make more sense to her. 
Uh, I just really enjoyed her stories and talking with her. It was so funny. I was telling you, you know, we kind of got our, our time zones mixed up and she's from Canada and I thought she was from the East coast. And so bless her heart. She had to get up really early and do the interview. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) But what a great story. And if you have a story, we would love for you to share it with us. I won't make you do it at the crack of dawn. (laughs) Or we'll try not to. No promises. But we like spooky stories all the time. You can email us at the unrest podcast at gmail.com. Or guess what? You can still find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the social medias. We still have our Instagram giveaway going on uh, to help us reach a thousand followers. Yes, I think we're sadly away. (laughs) Tell your mom to like us, your dad to like us, your brother and sister, please. And you can win a gift card and some cute little boozy ghost stickers. But until next time. Unrest in peace.